All right, I want to bring in Daniel Levy, president of the U.S. Middle East Project, who has a paper out with the Carnegie Endowment for International Peace on a new way forward for U.S. foreign policy in the Middle East. Daniel, thanks for joining us on this. I really appreciate it. I, I first want to get your reaction uh, to what the U.S. US ambassador said there. It's a very simple reaction, Yasmin. Not good enough. It's not enough to call out where Hamas is violating international law, as it should be called out, but not to call out disproportionate responses from Israel. You quoted the figures yourself, Yasmin, in terms of the casualty numbers in Gaza, in terms of the number of children. This is an ongoing occupation and denial of Palestinian rights. And if you can't set it in this context, and if the best you can do at the United Nations is to fail to call for an immediate ceasefire and to prevent a UN statement, let alone UN action, and if you have, which you do, the Israeli prime minister in the Israeli media tonight, this is what's been happening this evening in the Israeli media, thanking President Biden for his support, then something is going horribly wrong with a new administration failing to assert itself on this issue, failing to live up to its own stated principles that America is back because America respects international law, respects human rights, and respects values. This fails on every one of those scores. Um, so I want to read some of the piece um, that you wrote, um, in that you co-wrote in Foreign Policy, because um, I thought it was a really good piece, talking about um, essentially that Biden needs to change the approach to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Um, one part you talk about, um, U.S. policy has been good at making sure Israelis get the security and well-being they deserve. U.S. policy has been spectacularly bad at applying those standards to Palestinians and at challenging the separate and unequal system in place. Things are guaranteed to get worse if Washington continues down this path, path, even if the diplomatic destructiveness of the previous administration is replaced by the apparent good intentions of its successor. Can you expand on that? I'm glad I still agree with every word I wrote. <laughs> <laughs> it would be bad if you didn't. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, if I can expand on that. There was this notion that America could hide behind, we support a peace process, we support negotiations. And what we've argued in that article and in the, uh, the report of calling for a rights-based approach is, in actual fact, Trump perhaps did us a favor, if I can put it like that, by burning the fig leaf. The scorched earth that he took to this issue means we can't go back to pretending. This is just about relaunching a peace process. The framing now is as increasingly understood by Americans, by Democrat voters, by Democrat elected officials even, is that Palestinians need to have their rights addressed. Mm. America can't duck that issue, just like Israelis should have their rights. But Palestinians also, they're the people being denied those rights. And I, I think as America has gone through a belated, a still partial moment of reckoning in terms of racial justice. If you're serious about justice, then that has to be applied across the board. And I think people are increasingly understanding that you're going to get this wrong. And every time when you return to this issue, because there's another explosion, and there will be another explosion, as long as Palestinians are denied their basic freedoms and rights, the basics are going to be even worse for one fundamental reason. As long as Israel is treated with maximum impunity, Israel, Israelis will see no reason to change their treatment for Palestinians because it carries no costs and consequences. In fact, Israel has gotten itself into a strategic cul-de-sac, a strategic muddle, because there's no military solution to this. It's not about the end of rocket fire. There has to be a diplomatic, political, strategic solution, and that means recognizing that Palestinians deserve justice too, and America needs to be on the right side of this debate, and people need to be telling their uh, elected officials and the administration that this isn't good enough. So, so what about the fact that Bernie Sanders tweeted out today and wrote an op-ed in the New York Times just yesterday talking about the funding that is given to Israel and how the U.S. needs to rethink the $4 billion that they give in aid to Israel every year um, as a way to figure out a solution to the conflict? Well, the interesting thing here, Yasmin, is that Senator Sanders is not so much of an outlier in beginning to call into question whether American aid to Israel can be unconditional and unrestricted. You've had a series of 
of senators, not a majority, this isn't about to pass a vote, but this feels like the shifting of an Overton window. This feels like something we haven't witnessed before in American politics, as a number of people are saying, wait a minute, we have rules that say that when we provide assistance, it has to be accounted for. It can't be used to violate people's rights. It can't be used for human rights abuses, for illegal actions such as settlements or disproportionate use of the military. We have to keep a check on what's being used. And the idea that America can sit on the sidelines because it has no leverage is patently absurd, given the numbers that you've just mentioned in terms of that assistance. I, I want to leave folks with what you talked about, the internal politics of, of this whole thing, specifically um, in the Palestinian area. Uh, you say this, meanwhile, Palestinians must, of course, lead in renewing their own politics. However, the U.S. and Israeli preference for an unaccountable Palestinian leadership committed to the peace process status quo rather than a representative and re-empowered leadership that could more effectively challenge the occupation has had a debilitating impact. It is a fantastic piece um, on foreign policy. It is so good. Uh, Daniel Levy, thank you so much for joining us on this. Uh, really appreciate it. We need more think pieces like this.